You know, summertime is a difficult time to grow vegetables, and I have my favorite, but there are others. And Richard Tyson, our division manager for Orange County Extension Service, is here to talk about this little uh, vegetable right here. It's actually a fruit, but we grow it as a vegetable in the garden, right? Right, right. Yeah. Now, come in and tell us a little uh -huh. bit about uh, some of these. Now, what, what are we looking at? Okay, this is a calabasa. It's, it's in the cucurbitae moshata family, and it, it has some different shapes and sizes, as you can yeah, see here. The one here. I had there was really kind of had a crooked neck. Mm -hmm. and I, I can see this hanging down off of a vine, but it's pretty heavy. Right. Uh, does this, uh, this form vine a lot? It does. It, 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 it vines very heavily up, uh, out 15, 20 feet and branches out. You really need a lot of space for this plant. Mm -hmm. And we have so few vegetables that grow well through the summertime here in central Florida. But this is a rare exception and it will really grow hard and fast. It's related to the Seminole pumpkin, which was very important to the uh, Indians and also the early settlers. Has history behind it, right? It does. It was so important that it was, it was uh, said that it started the third Seminole Indian War when the Army scouts and engineers tore up Chief Billy Bowleg's garden and smashed all of his pumpkins and he retaliated and that started the third Seminole wow, Indian War. What history behind some mm -hmm. of these vegetables? You wouldn't yep. think that. And this is just another form. Now it's a very hard shelled type. Right. And my guess is that helps keep the insects off of it. It does. It's uh, very resistant to insect control. I mean insect damage. Now you can get some caterpillars, you know, uh, butterflies and moths will lay eggs on it in the summertime. Mm -hmm. That's probably the, the main pest you need to watch and you can always just pick those off by hand. Yeah, I noticed uh, that this one here may even have a little spot on it mm -hmm. where a caterpillar tried to get started at one time. That's right. what it kind of looks like right. anyway. Uh, this one here looks like it was laying down on the ground. Now, these are related to what? Pumpkins and melons and right. all those the type of things. The cucurbitaceae family and they all need to be pollinated. I was going to ask you about that. By yeah. bees. Um, mm -hmm. In, in urban areas, which we're in central Florida, and we do have a lot of urban areas, the bee populations can be a little bit sparse. So mm -hmm. there is a way that you can pollinate them by hand. Uh, if you go out in the garden between 8 or 10 o'clock in the morning and you look at the flowers, the male flowers are going to be sitting up on a little stalk like this, about three or four inches high. You just cut those off, pull the petals back a little bit, look for the female flowers which are, are sitting on the stem, uh, attached to the stem with a little ovary, and you stick the male flower in there, swish it around, and you can probably do about half a dozen uh, female flowers. How about this? Sounds and, like you've done that. Oh yeah, and it works really good. You get perfect uh, German or perfect pollination. Pollination. That and I tell people the little pumpkin is actually on back of the female flower. Mm -hmm. You can see it there. Now this is what the plant looks like when it's growing, right? That's the early one. Now normally you wouldn't plant them this close because these yeah. plants get huge. They're about four or five feet apart. You plant the seeds about an inch deep. Uh, water them and fertilize them real good, but once they get started and they start growing, you need to back off from the water and fertilizer because you'll just <laughs> you'll end up with the jungle instead of a lot of fruit. So you back off a little bit. Now later. we're calling this the calabasa, right? But we can also call it the Seminole pumpkin, or is that a different animal? The Seminole pumpkin shape looks a little bit different, but it's mm -hmm. all the same plant, and these are all different types here too. So you could say they're all in the same family. Same yes. family. Now you're going to show us how to get some seeds out of right? here if we want it's to. It's difficult to find uh, tropical pumpkin it seeds is. in seed catalogs. But if you go to the store and you buy one of these, you can you can cut it open and you can get your own seeds. Okay, you, you can nice see them there. there you go. Now you have to wash these seeds so out very well. You have to wash them out very well because a lot of times fruits, the uh, the juice of fruits will inhibit seed germination in a lot of fruits. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure anytime you're saving seed out of a fruit that you get all of the juice off first. That's a lot of seeds in there. Mm -hmm. It yeah. is. Yeah, you could probably get 50 plants out of this one. Fruit. Yeah, and they're all pretty much capable of germinating, I would think. Pretty much. I'd say you'd probably have 80, 90 percent germination. Yeah, I love you lay small. them out on mm -hmm. a on a something that they'll dry. You let them kind of mm -hmm. air dry for a day or two and then go out and plant them an inch deep. Now, Richard, you just put them in here, washed them off. Mm -hmm. Is that what you did? And yes. You can see them kind of floating around inside that bowl mm -hmm. there. And then you'll put them over here. How long will you leave them here? I want to make sure they're dried off completely before I... Uh, plant them in the ground, but I don't want to leave them out too long. Mm -hmm. Now, Richard, supposedly, suppose I take these at the end of the season. What do I do to store them until next year? Well, if you're going to store them, you want to put them in uh, one of those uh, canning jars, you know, that mm -hmm. seals and stick them in the refrigerator. Make sure and dry. that's probably the best. Make sure they're dry. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best way to store them, you know, for a homeowner just to stick them in the refrigerator mm -hmm. like that. Now, this one down here is a little, the way at the end is a little different color there, but they get uh, a little more creamy as they get mm -hmm. more mature. But some of them will stay a little bit green. So this. This one is still ready to eat right here, but usually they'll get a very uh, yellow mottled look like that when they get mature. Okay, so. and you bake them and do things like that with them? You can bake them, steam them, boil them. Uh, you can make 
uh, puree and make pancakes out of them. It's, there's a lot of different things you can yeah, do I with can them. tell that you've done that before. <laughs> Richard, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Tom. You want more information on the calabasa, really a neat uh, pumpkin-type fruit there, or Seminole pumpkin, call the Extension Service. You can get some information on it and maybe try your local independent garden centers for seeds. Otherwise, like Richard says... Get you one at the uh, food market, save the seeds, and then plant them again next year starting as early as March. So call the Extension Service for more information.